the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to St. John's here in Portadown. And welcome Margaret, also Neve and, and Aoife. And we send our love and our best wishes to Anya uh, in South Korea, of course. And we welcome Noel and, and Irene and all your friends and all your relatives and neighbours who are joining us here in St. John's today. I want to welcome Barry's former colleagues and also um, the members of the Knights of Malta who are joining us for our celebration here. Our friends from the other churches are particularly welcome and uh, we come to give thanks to the Lord. We come to count our blessings, to give thanks for the life and times of Dr. Barry Bradley. Dear friends, we begin our Mass by remembering our sins and asking God for help and for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. And so we pray. Lord, we believe your son died and rose to life on the third day. We pray this for Barry, our beloved brother who has died. May he enjoy the fullness of life with all the saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you all to be seated. We now come to our readings and I invite Marion and Ingrid to come forward to lead us in our readings. And thank you, Marion and Ingrid, so much. The first reading is a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time and season for everything. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable in its time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come for me now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, not that I've gone to prepare you a place. I shall return to take you with me, so where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. And just be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on what can only be described as a difficult and sad day for our lovely family. Today, we come to say farewell to Dr. Barry Bradley, a much-loved husband, father, father-in-law, brother, uncle, friend and neighbour. Barry hadn't been too well, but even so, his death was unexpected, and it has brought shock and bewilderment to all his family and to everyone who knew him. And I especially want to welcome Barry's wife Margaret, his daughters Neve and Aoife, his son-in-law Kyle, his sisters Noel and Irene, and all the family circle. Sadly, Barry's daughter Anya cannot be with us today as she lives in South Korea, and we will keep her and her husband Phil in our prayers on this sad occasion. And we'll hear from Anya, courtesy of modern technology, very shortly. Barry was very much prominent in the Knights of Malta, this great organization which gives witness to our faith, as well as serving the poor and the sick. And I want to welcome some of his associates, colleagues, friends, who are here with us this afternoon. You are very welcome indeed, and thank you for coming. I know Barry would be delighted 
chuffed is the word at your presence here this afternoon. Margaret, Neve, Aoife, Onion, Kyle and Phil. The first thing I want to do on behalf of Father Michael McGinn, all of us present here, and myself, is to offer our sincere condolences to you on what is certainly a very dark time for you all. Our presence here today is testimony to our prayerful support for you and prayers on behalf of this good man whom God has, for reasons beyond our understanding, called to himself. Barry was only 71 years of age when he died. He has left us all too soon. But we are privileged, even in the face of death, to be able to gather together here as his family and friends to pray for him and for ourselves and to offer this Eucharist a word which means thanksgiving for the gift of his life. In the gospel we have just listened to, we are reminded we have a place to go to when our earthly pilgrimage is done. This is what we believe. We also know that human suffering is a painful and dreadful reality. Barry suffered with his illness over the last few years, but even so, he suffered with great dignity and enormous courage. And it was his faith which he embraced, which enabled him to live through his illness and his death. He held on to life for as long as he could. But when the time of fighting ended last Tuesday, however, he was able to let go and let God take him. He is at peace now, a peace that is eternal. He is home. There are a few vocations in life that pretty much take over your life, that become your identity, something that you were 24-7. Barry had one of the vocations that becomes you, and you become it. He was a doctor, and many of his patients over the years owe him a great debt of gratitude for making them well again, or even giving them their life back. This good doctor took seriously his vocation given him by Christ. Not only that, but he dedicated a large part of his life to the Knights of Malta, helping those who were sick. Quite simply, he was a person who chose kindness so many times that he became kind. He chose service so many times that he became a servant. But it wasn't all work. Barry was a person who loved life. He had a great zest for living. He loved fun. He had a great sense of humor. And his lovely smile lifted all our spirits. Throughout the course of his life, he made many friends. He made friends easily. And it is not surprising why. He was gentle, kind, caring, courteous, sincere, and humble. 
and anyone who encountered Barry was drawn to him because of these qualities. And his untimely death sadly deprives us all of his lovely presence. He enjoyed holidaying abroad and in Ireland. He loved sport, in particular motorsport. He was a great fan of the Circuit of Ireland and he would follow it along with Margaret by going to different stages around the country. After a Holy Communion, we will hear from Anya, who will say more about her father and how special he was to the family. And speaking of family, Barry was first and foremost a family man. His family was incredibly important to him and was one of the things that distinguished him and helped define who he was as a person. He was so proud of them all and their achievements. There was nothing he wouldn't do for them. The long hours of practicing medicine were a sacrifice of love so they could have a good life. Barry and Margaret were married for 48 years. And if you count the two years of courtship, they were together for 50 years. Margaret, a remarkable achievement indeed. Yours was a partnership that worked. An example of a response cared for the other more than themselves. Today, we mourn the loss of Barry, but we also celebrate a life we lived. He was one of the best. He never passed you by. Always ready for a chat. He was a wonderful force for good. Who gave of himself fully to others. There are no words that can adequately summarize and capture Barry's life. Husband, father, father-in-law, brother, uncle, friend, and neighbor. The tributes have been heaped upon him in life, and now the words of praise and gratitude have sounded long and loud since last Tuesday. How many people's lives have been deeply and intensely affected by this good man. He had amazing courage and strength. He was one of the bravest people anyone could ever meet. He has shown us that life in all its fragility and vulnerability is still a most wonderful gift and we should live it the best we can. He has shown us that faith matters, that faith is real and is a good thing and can sustain us even in the most challenging of times. Thank you, Barry, for being you. You were a a blessing for us all. May you enter the unspeakable joy of eternal life. And we look forward to the day when we will meet you again in eternal life, just as you look forward to meeting all of us. And until we meet again, may your gentle soul rest in peace. And as I have already said, we'll hear from Anya very soon after Holy Communion. We'll hear more about Barry, the special person that he was. Eternal rest come to Barry, O Lord. And now perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
And I invite you all to stand for our prayers of the faithful. My dear friends, let us not be afraid. God is with us. Let us pray to him with the trust of a child. That we may let Barry go with love and trust into the hands of God. We pray in faith, Lord, hear our prayer. That Barry may see the face of God in heaven and intercede for us there. We pray in faith. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Barry's family, that they may find comfort in the faith that they will see him again in the kingdom of heaven. We pray in faith. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the wonderful doctors and nurses, and for all who care for life at its weakest moments, we pray in faith. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us here present, that we may remember that we are God's children and that he cares for us, we pray in faith. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we now take a moment in the silence of our own hearts to pray for Barry. God of love and mercy, we give Barry back to you, who first gave him to us. And as you did not lose him in the giving, so we do not lose him in the return. Keep him safe and welcome him into your kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you all to be seated. And I, dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Lord, bless the offerings we bring for the eternal peace of Barry, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, in all the changing circumstances of our days, to give you thanks and praise. Today we join with the Blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist and all the saints in their song of joy and praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do know what the Lord and his friends did at the Last Supper. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the Jew for us, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was over, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and rising, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love, along with Francis and all who lead us in the faith. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, John the Baptist, and all the saints, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let's stand now for the Lord's own prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe now for eternal life. Amen. Those on the right hand side come forward for communion first, and then those on the on the left. Is that correct, Francis? Okay.
Thank you everyone for being here with us today, this sad time. My heart is just broken, but I knew, I knew that this day was going to come. I just didn't think it would be so soon. Barry and I moved here five weeks ago, and have been the happiest five weeks of our life. We met some wonderful people, and the care that Barry received at Craig Avon Hospital he has never received any place else in this country. And that brings great comfort to me. The staff, the ambulance personnel, just everyone. The care was just unbelievable. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you for letting Barry have such a peaceful death. I have my three lovely daughters, Neve. Who lived with us and helped me care for Barry for the past few years. Eva and Kyle, who after many 13 hour shifts came to Belfast to help me with Barry. And Anya, who tried to come home as often as she could, but did come home at Christmas. And the five of us had a lovely family Christmas. And Anya, just recently diagnosed with amyloidosis, the same illness as her father. Her father made her promise that she would not come for the funeral today. And that's why she's not here. But I wanted to say a lot about Barry. And if I did, I'm afraid you'd all be here for a long, long time. So Anya has prepared the eulogy and recorded it. So Kyle is going to play it for you now. modern technology. My dad was born in Oma, County Tyrone, the youngest of four children. A talented Irish dancer, he left the Christian Brothers School and moved to Belfast to fulfill his dream of studying medicine at Queen's University, Belfast. In 1972, as a medical student on placement in Belfast City Hospital, his life changed forever when he met a young nurse called Margaret but that's a story for a whole different setting. Married in 1974, the love he had for her was solid, unwavering, and eternal. His first job was at the emergency department of the then Royal Victoria Hospital at the height of the troubles in Belfast. It was his perfect job. The adrenaline junkie in him loved the busy, active pace. He was known as the Savlon Kid because he always had a bottle in his pocket. As soon as an injured patient arrived into ED, out came the bottle of Savlon. No one was ever sure if it was the Savlon or his skill as a doctor, which saved many a life. He became a father with the birth of Neve in 1978, and then again in 1979 when Anya arrived. His family was complete in 1989 when his third daughter, Aoife, was born. 
Although his idea of making dinner was to incinerate everything to the point of no return in the deep flat fryer, he was someone we could always rely on, and more than once answered an emergency call for the dad taxi in the small hours of the morning. My dad was a huge influence in the lives of his children and helped us grow into the people we are today with his support, love and guidance. He worked in many roles in most of the Belfast hospitals over the years and as these years took their toll, took to a slower pace of working life, spending the final years of his career with the Northern Ireland Blood Transfusion Service. Following the Romanian Revolution in 1989, he went as part of an aid convoy to deliver essential medical supplies to hospitals in need. This led to involvement with the Soros Foundation and resulted in him setting up a training development program for Romanian nurses, where they had the opportunity to come to Belfast and spend four weeks shadowing nurses in the Matter Hospital. Although at times it was hard to find a bed in our house, the program continues to this day and is a treasured legacy. During the Bosnian War of 1992, Dad was asked to take a convoy of aid with the UNHCR to Sarajevo. Anyone who knows him will know he did not need to be asked twice. It was a very dangerous trip. Dad, being Dad, said if he made it into Sarajevo, he was walking down Sniper Alley, the informal name for the main street in Sarajevo, which, during the war, was lined with sniper posts and became infamous as a dangerous place for civilians to transverse. Mum was so relieved when she got the phone call from Dad to say he had made his walk and survived. Of course, on a later call, he admitted to having walked down an additional five times. He also took part in aid convoys to Albania after the Civil War in 1997. Life became altogether safer when Dad's travel destinations changed from war-torn countries to pilgrimages to Lourdes. He acted as medical officer on many pilgrimages over the years. Dad joined the OMA unit of the Order of Malta Ambulance Corps as a teenager, eventually becoming medical officer and eventually a knight of the order. In his spare time, he was involved as, in motorsports as a basics doctor, covering a variety of events such as the Circuit of Ireland and providing medical cover at many Belfast marathons. Mum and Dad loved to travel, as many people here will know, if they followed his Facebook page. And as life slowed down and retirement approached, travel became a priority. Korea, China, Japan, Russia and the US all got visits from the travelling pensioners. Over the last few years, despite worsening health, he made a memorable trip to Hawaii to visit Pearl Harbor and, experiencing the bitter cold of his first Korean winter, started the mask trend we're all too familiar with today. Although the last few years led to limitations in his lifestyle, he enjoyed several family trips around Ireland, including a trip to Clonakilty and the home of Michael Collins. My dad was a remarkable man, with a dry wit, great sense of humour, enormous faith in God and in his family. Everyone who knew him will know how much he was loved and how much he will be missed. But he is at peace, reunited with his parents, his brother Tony and our beloved Nico. Thank you, uh, Margaret and Kyle, and of course, uh, our thanks to uh, Anya uh, in South Korea, and uh, thanks to the wonders of uh, modern technology. We couldn't have done this 15, 20 years ago, but it's wonderful. And you heard the full story of Barry's life, and without doubt, he had an abundance of humanity, and you just heard the reasons why. So uh, thanks to Anya, and thanks to uh, Margaret and Kyle uh, for that. And of course, thanks to everybody who uh, helped in Barry's Requiem Mass. Our thanks to Maria for the beautiful, it's Maria, isn't it? Uh, thanks to Maria for the beautiful, uplifting music. Um, we need this uh, on occasions like this. Uh, thanks to all who read. And thanks to uh, Francis, my good friend behind me, our Sargaston for preparing the church for Barry's Requiem Mass and for keeping us right uh, during Holy Communion and so on. So Francis, thank you so much. And of course, thanks to um, my great friend, Father Michael, for celebrating uh, Barry's Requiem Mass. 
and thanks to you all for coming here this afternoon, uh, for being of support to Margaret and all the family at this difficult time. And Barry, Barry's committal will take place tomorrow morning in Roselong. But we now have Barry's final commendation. A blessing for death. Barry, may you know in your soul there is no need to be afraid. May you now be given every blessing and all the shelter that you need. May there be a beautiful welcome for you in the home you are going to because you are not going anywhere strange but back to the home you never left. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And now, dear friends, before we go our separate ways, we take leave of Barry. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we will joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We pray now in silence for Barry. And now we have reverenced his body with holy water and with incense. We pray for thy, receive his soul, present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, come to greet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul, present him to God the Most High. Barry, may Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you into the company of the saints. And so we pray now, into your hands, God of mercies, we commend our beloved brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, Barry will rise with Christ on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings you gave him during his, his busy life. They are signs to us of your love and goodness. Merciful Lord, turn towards us now. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise for Barry. Help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Barry forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may see in your order of service booklet at the back uh, the prayer, the daily prayer of the Order of Malta. And it would be appropriate in memory of Barry if this was read out. Is there somebody? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So this is the lovely prayer of the Order of Malta. Lord Jesus, thou hast seen fit to enlist me for thy service among the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem. I humbly entreat thee through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin of Palermo, of St. John the Baptist, Blessed Gerard, and all the saints, and blessed of our order, to keep me faithful to the traditions of our order, be it mine to practice and defend the Catholic, the Apostolic, the Roman faith against all enemies of religion. Be it mine to practice charity towards my neighbors, especially the poor and sick, Give me the strength I need to carry out this my resolve, learning ever from thy holy gospel, a spirit of deep and generous Christian devotion, 
striving ever to promote God's glory, the world's peace, and all that may benefit the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. In peace now, dear friends, we bring Barry to his place of rest. Amen. Thank you. 